think it's time to switch up the flavor of this channel from Eminence in Shadow to Classroom of the Elite. We have Satisfies content. He covers cut light novel content. I think these will be great for anime reactions. Sorry, reaction content. He's going to cover prologue intro and chapter two. Let's check it out right now. Welcome to the Classroom of the Elite light novel series where we cover every single volume from first all the way to last. So you nice. know exactly what's going on. And in this video, we're covering volume one, which spans episodes one to three in the anime. So without further okay. ado, Let's dive right into it. Obviously, this is like an hour long video. We're not going to fucking watch an hour long video. But what I'll do is watch like sections. So each video will be like a chapter something, right? Let's go. Our story starts in Classroom D at the Tokyo Metropolitan Advanced Nurturing High School, a government funded institution tasked with developing Japan's future leaders. Our protagonist, this Anakoji, is, was pretend- <laughs> This is a fucking problem, dude. <laughs> if these people, and again, Classroom D elite- Season one starts off with an intro scene just to show how shitty the characters are. And don't get me wrong, Koenji is my favorite character, but the anime literally, even the light novel starts off with Anakoji talking about how people are not born equal. Then we get on the bus and Koenji says, fuck you, grandma, I'm not getting up. This is a priority seat, but I don't care. If these are the people that you're going to take to school, try to make them into fucking leaders of Japan, we are fucked. a heavy topic. Can we, as human beings? Yeah, we're, we're just shitty politicians. That's it. Their, their future leaders are basically shitty, corrupt politicians. Ever be equal. He points out that we always chase equality. To give women an equal chance in the workforce, mm. we enacted affirmative action. Diversity, right? I think in the light novel, he even talks about if we are truly equal, then why are like females treated differently, right? They have different incentives. At the end of the day, it's not about equal. It's about equity. It's trying to like bump up the, the women up, right? So that they can have not more rights than the men, but have a more even leveling feel. But Anakoji's dialogue is very interesting, talking about how people are not born inherently equal. To help women feel safe, you provide forms of female-only transit. To help mm -hmm. those with disabilities, we offer many perks. Yep. But by putting all this effort into equality, doesn't that highlight just how unequal we really are? This is very true. People are not born equal. And these other things, this is called equity, right? Helping other people level the playing field. They might get more support and resources struck onto them, doesn't mean we're equal, it just helps them, you know, level the playing field. Anakoji believes that no, human beings are not equal. In fact, inequality is an essential part of being human. But he also doesn't think we should just accept inequality, but at the very least, we should at least acknowledge it. People are definitely not born equal. Literally, your spawn point in life determines your life. Isn't that crazy? The most important thing in life is not your innate skills or talents. All of these are the byproducts of where your spawn point is. Did you get born in fucking Africa? Or did you get born into a wealthy family in America? Shit like this will give you an immediate advantage. You cannot say people are born equal. And we are social creatures. Social creatures that are always constantly trying to size up different people. As soon as you walk into a room of people, do you know what people do as social creatures? Immediately, you scan the area. You look for people based off their height, their skin color, hair, the type of clothing they wear, how they present themselves. Are they fat? Are they skinny? Are they charismatic? All these different things you immediately gauge because we are not equal. Everybody wants to like fit into some kind of social hierarchy and play their roles. And in the middle of subconsciously, I'd say. This epiphany, he's rudely interrupted by a classmate he did not want to entertain. Horikita Suzun. She was stunning with keen eyes and beautiful. The devil! Horikita Suzune. Beautiful jet black long hair. Her name was Horikita Suzune. The Zune, not Suzune. Anakoji flinched. After running several play-by-plays on how to get rid of her, he decided the best strategy would be to just ignore her. And he straight up called her a fucking devil. He said, a symphony is playing in my head. It is the most ridiculous soundtrack I've ever heard in my life. And he says, the devil is approaching me. I think it's this scene, or if not at the very least, later he says that. That worked until the girl demanded that if he didn't wake up in the next three seconds, she would condemn him to quote unquote punishment. Well, so much for- The punishment is fucking stabbing you with thumbtacks, by the way. She fucking stabs you. There are some scenes in the anime where Horikita will do some crazy shit, like try to like hit, like she has like a pencil that's really sharp and she'll like fucking go like this to you. And it's like, what are you fucking doing? She apparently in the light novel, she actually does this shit. She just straight out stabs Ayanokoji. For that he thought, and he caved. Horikita needed his help for a plan. Ayanokoji knowing fully well that nothing good can come from this, mm. asked what would happen if he refused. Horikita laid it out simply. She would make his life a living hell. Thumbtacks on a seat. Who does this? 
Who fucking does? What kind of nor Here's the thing. I was gonna say, what kind of normal student does this? And I realized this is the classroom of the fucking sociopath. So actually, this makes a lot of sense. Splashing water on his clothes and casually stabbing him with a mathematical compass. Really, nothing was off the table. Hanakoji, not thrilled to find out how committed she was to this ultimatum, surrendered. He thought back to when this all first started. Okay. It was April of 2015, and Ainakoji was on a bus headed for high this? school. Y'all see this right here? The Giga Chat Koenji. The Giga Chat Koenji is right over here. Kushida's here. And I think in the light novel, Kushida didn't confront Koenji. There's like two rounds. Because we watched this light novel, we listened to the audiobook. So Ainakoji is right over here. I think Susan is like back there too, right? So this is the part where nobody fucking stands up. Also, bald. Bald. Bald entrance ceremony. He almost fell asleep but was rudely interrupted by the following words. You, shouldn't you give up your seat to this elderly woman? Our this fucking lady right here, dude. This is a, uh, so in, in the anime it was Kushida. You. But in the light novel, apparently it's some kind of random office worker. And this office worker is about to fucking debate Koenji shouldn't right now. Shouldn't you give up your seat to And fucking lose. This elderly woman, our protagonist, making sure this wasn't directed at him, looked around to see what was happening. The person being addressed was a muscular <laughs> blonde high school boy. And the request... I think Ayana Koji specifically described him as like a handsome, well-built blonde boy. <laughs> like, Giga Chad. was from an office lady. She's having trouble, exclaimed the office lady, being loud enough for everyone to hear. The boy refused. He asked why should he have to give up his seat. He had no reason for it. The lady Based. was livid. Pointing Based. out that he sat in priority seating, and it's common courtesy to offer those seats to the elderly. The That's the craziest part. This is priority seating. In the anime, it doesn't tell you it's priority seating. The anime is just him just sitting there, and Kushida says, Can you get up for the creamer? And it's like, fuck you. No, I don't want to do that. But in the light novel, it's even further explained that this is a priority seat. Meaning, you can only sit there if you're like a senior, you're disabled, you're a child, stuff like that. But bro sits there with this bag on the side, by the way. The seat has enough space. If Koenji decided to move his bag and shuffle a little bit, the grandma could share the spot. But even that is too much for our Giga Chad. Boy, not convinced, said that she had no legal basis for this claim. He sat in the seat, so it was up to him whether or not he would move. Mm. And it's downright ridiculous to think that he should have to give up his seat just because he's young. The office lady grew angrier by the second, asking the boy... Grown-ass woman right now starting beef with the fucking 15 or 16-year-old high school student, and she's about to fucking lose in this debate of intellect. If this was any way to talk to his superior, the boy laughed at the idea. Superior? <laughs> Pointing out that age didn't make her a superior. And in fact, if you take age out of the equation, they were being rude to him. Office yeah. Lady, still angry, was on the verge of... Because this is an entire social construct based off of age. Your seniors, your superiors. But if you think about it, are you truly superior to Koenji? In fact, children, right? Ch like in, in society, especially in Asian culture, you're taught to basically be like subservient to your elders, listen to your elders, always bow down to them, always treat them with respect. But if you think about a society is built on capitalism such that older people as they retire, they retire, they don't have a job, well, you know what they do? They fucking live their golden ages, but they can't just live like that. Someone else has to suffer for them. It's the younger generation that continues to work, that continues to put it into society, gets this capitalistic economy going so they can pay for the old people's retirement, right? So if you really think about it, young people have priority, right? Young people are superior than the old people. And Koenchi even goes to the fucking discussion telling this bitch, hey, age? Superior? If you, if you want to talk about superiority, oh my god, Koenchi should have even dug in harder at this office woman, dude. Giving up. But out of nowhere, a high school girl chimed in. Ana Koji noticed that she was wearing his school's uniform. A new challenger has appeared. She pointed out that while politeness isn't necessary, by giving up his seat, the blonde boy would be contributing to the good of society. The most important line. And again, this is like the intro scene of high school. I'm sorry, high school. Classroom of the I was going to say high school of the elite because of DXD. Classroom of the elite in season one anime. Koenji stating that he does not want to contribute towards society is the defining moment for his character and just to kind of tell you about the people watching the show for the first time 
This is the classroom of the fucking sociopaths, dude. The boy was revved up. Finally, a worthy adversary. He said that while that may be true... <laughs> a worthy adversary is showing up a new challenger. He didn't care. The only thing he cared about was his well-being. And also, why his seat? Couldn't she ask anyone else on the bus? If seating mm -hmm. was the objective, it didn't have to be priority seating, right? Yes. This Take out the priority from this context, then all of a sudden, everyone else, why aren't you getting up? You're all making side eyes. What the fuck are you doing? You feel guilty? Do you feel guilty? You're just looking out the fucking window because you don't want to make eye contact. All of your hypocrites, if you truly felt bad, if you wanted to contribute towards society, then you should get up without having to worry about what, whether or not this is priority or not. And this is the beautiful thing about what Koenji does here. By simply reducing the argument into, hey, let's take the priority out of the equation. Why is no one else getting up, right? Everyone in this fucking school bus is a piece of shit by their standards. That's why you two are a hypocrite. Straight up pissed everyone off. But the high school girl didn't give up. She pleaded for someone on the bus to give up their seat. <laughs> Hanekoji was left speechless. Nah. Effectively and earnestly she made her request. Thinking to himself that this girl was quite capable. But even then, this wouldn't be easy. Ignoring the blonde high schooler's rudeness, everyone on the bus agreed. Why should they have to give up their seat? Anakoji observed carefully, and his eyes met with the girl next to him. It was Horikita, mm. and while Koen they hadn't Sorry, met Horikita. Yet, he could tell they shared the same opinion. Finally, the high school girl's effort paid off, and someone gave up their seat. The bus reached their school, and Anakoji. I think it was like a random office worker, right? A random office worker got up, right? Thinking to himself that this girl was quite capable. But even then, this wouldn't yeah. be easy. Ignoring the blonde high schooler's rudeness, Everyone on the bus agreed. Why should they have to give up their seat? Yes. Anakoji observed carefully, and his eyes met with the girl next to him. It was Horikita, and while they hadn't met yet... So technically, this is a bus of just Class D students? Is that, is that it? Is that why they're all trash? Well, it's not just Class D, you know. There, there is a couple of Class D students in here, but, you know, there's some office workers in here too. He could tell. They shared the same opinion. Finally, the high school girls... This lady right here. This lady getting up right now? To give her seat to the fucking granny? She's weak. Weak mindset. L. She would not be class D in the classroom of the elite. Nah. She would be fucking class E, dude. Fucking getting up for the granny. Effort weak. Paid off. Tool. And someone gave up their seat. Now think about it. The granny in this moment is the product of the black room. She orchestrated this entire thing. And you think Koenji saying all that shit? You don't think they were conspiring from the beginning? No, 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 no. Koenji and granny started this shit. So that the granny could fucking shit on everybody in this bus and then have her own seat. That's right, guys. You guys all got fucking played. The bus reached their school and Hanakoji got out, but before he could get to class, Horikita confronted him. She wanted to know why he was looking at her. Hanakoji apologized and said that he just wanted her opinion on the whole seating situation. Horikita confirmed his suspicions. She too didn't want to give up her seat, but it was for a completely different reason. I think Hanakoji here says, I don't want problem. We are kind of the same because we made the same decision, but Anakoji says, I don't want problems. And Suzune says, bitch, we are not equal. I did this of my own volition. I don't problem? Problem? This is why you and I are not the same. Why the fuck is this girl so hostile immediately, dude? What the fuck is wrong with her? This is their first interaction. They just got off the bus. She's like, the fuck what are you looking at me for? Anakoji's like, I don't know. I just thought it was interesting that, you know, you didn't get up. I thought we just shared the same opinion. I don't want any problem. And she's like, you don't want problems? Fuck you. What a bitch. Anakoji didn't want to get involved because he didn't want to be in the spotlight. Horikita, on the other hand, did not want to give up her seat because she deemed it pointless. <laughs> Both of them agreed. They wanted yeah. nothing to do with each other. But we're not the same. Arriving at class, Anakoji had one mission. See, if I didn't listen to the audiobook from the light novel... Like, listen to all the different content. Like, this is satisfies content on cut light novel stuff, right? But, like, notice how I'm basically adding stuff that was cut out. Like, I guess Satisfy didn't think it was necessary to make all these different points that I'm pointing out. Like, this is just me improving based off of the theft 17 minutes of volume zero that so volume one we listened to last night. But he's not really talking about everything, huh? I mean, then again, I'm just trying to make content and trying to be funny and trying to think of all the hilarious, ridiculous reasons. And he's just kind of summarizing more of the miscontent from the episodes. Give the perfect first introduction and make friends. The last thing he wanted to do was become the loner kid because that would make him stand out. 
He entered the classroom and approached his assigned desk. A loner kid makes you stand out. I never thought about that. Because obviously, you want to be a fucking NPC, but you can't be too much of an NPC. Now you're actually standing out for the sake of not standing out. That makes, oh, I never thought about that. By this time, the classroom was half-filled. Everyone was either studying or socializing. Aino Koji wanted to start a conversation with someone, but he got too caught up in his head. And it was too late. The classroom filled up and he lost his chance. But amidst the chaos, he heard a familiar voice. It was the girl that sat next to him on the bus. Horikita Suzun. Horikita. They were neighbors, and their first encounter was anything but pleasant. In fact, she expressed frankly how much it sucked that they were in the same class. <laughs> Anakoji not thrilled. So you know what? I don't even feel bad for the Marikita moments. I don't feel bad that we completely manipulated her and broke her down near the end of the finale and fucking made her sick and everything. Yama Goat, Yamauchi, good job. You know what? Horikita Suzune is even more evil in the light novel. Saw so has a chance to make his first friend and introduced himself. And after a bit of back and forth, Horikita complied. And although he wasn't fond of her attitude, he had to accept. She was what? pretty cute. Mid <laughs> That's it? Bro folded because she's a little cute? I mean, if we're talking about character design, yeah, she's got that, you know, she's got that Sundari appeal going on. But bro, come on now. Conversation, they noticed another familiar face. Koenji. He was a blonde, muscular high school boy from the bus, and his yes. name was Koenji Rokusuke. They're Rokusuke Koenji. So is he actually... Someone's, I think in the light novel, they mentioned that Koenji dyed his hair blonde, so this is not his natural hair color. So all those moments where he goes, oh yeah, oh yeah, pretty girl, you know? All these, like, gaijin moments. He's not actually a foreigner. I don't know. People are saying, like, well, it's a Rokusuke is a Japanese last name, so you could then... Theorized that maybe his mom was Caucasian and his dad's Japanese, right? And that's how Koenji has the blonde hair. But seemingly, it's, I don't know. I think that he is just Japanese and he's just dyeing his hair blonde. And he just says English to sound cool. Their luck just couldn't get any worse. The first bell rang. And with that arrived their teacher, who Aino Koji could only describe Beautiful. as the physical manifestation of discipline. She looked to be about 30. <laughs> This girl, I mean, the only thing she got going is her fucking cleavies and her black stockings, dude. She wore a suit, but underneath her tough expression, mm. she had delicate features with a well-kept ponytail. Delicate features, you say? The ponytail is one of her signature hairstyles, though, right? She introduced herself as Chabashira Sai, their Japanese history and homeroom teacher. And she would be with them until graduation, since homeroom teachers didn't swap in between. Until graduation, bitch. This first episode, <laughs> we don't know anything about the school. You give us the point, everybody's happy to spend it. And at that point, Chabashira could have done, Hey guys, be careful with your points. They don't just automatically refresh at the beginning of each week or each month. You know, you got to be careful. But no, you know what she did? You know what Chabashira did? She said fucking nothing. She said, you fucking dumb monkeys. Y'all are going to waste your points. I'm not going to say anything. I could say something and step in and try to help my own class, try to get higher so that I too can benefit. But instead of that, I'm going to shoot myself in the fucking foot Fuck every one of you. I'm going to hit the back of you with the fucking steel chair in a couple minutes when you all spend your points. And I'm like trying to think, why is it that Chabashira is getting in her own way? It's the fucking class D teacher is dookie, dude. You guys just see a busty teacher, fucking dom, mommy, black stockings, cleavage. But at the same time, the teacher's not supposed to tell them the point system. Yeah, we could do that. But I swear to God. Even if that's the case, there are future moments where Chabashira just continues to get in our own way. But at the same time, it's like, bitch, we're trying to help you out. Why are you being so confrontational? Between the years. From there, she covered some of the details of attending the school. All the students. Yeah, some of the details. Not except the most important part of the fucking points. Lived in dorms located at the school. No communication was permitted with anyone outside the school. Not even... If she, says, if she says or helps too much, they reduce her salary. You know what's reducing her salary? It's the fact that she's still in fucking class D teacher. That's why her salary is shit. Not because that she's not helping and trying to get their class to fucking B, C, B, A. Imagine how much more money she'd be making if she had fucking helped her class out in a smart way. But no, you can continue earning your shitty class D salary. See if I care, Chabashira. Um, the only exception would be if the school allows it. No leaving the school grounds, period. The campus had everything you'd ever need karaoke theaters cafes stores you name it the campus spanned about 150 acres and just for reference you could build about 18 houses on just wow. one acre. so yeah this place was massive 
it had its own currency system, the S system. Students would be given ID. Is this Anokuchi's birthday? October 20th? Is that what that says? All I remember is the previous episode, we had Ryu and Anokuchi's birthday, but then right after it was all, almost like leaning right into Christmas. So this is still like a month. It's like two months off though. Unless there was like a two month skip that I'm not aware of. cards that held points which could be used for any purchase on campus and access to all facility. Think of it like a one in everything credit card. Also, you can buy anything on campus with points. Points were provided by the school and automatically deposited into your account at the start of every month. You can also transfer points. <laughs> well, it does get transferred, but it depends on how well you do. To someone else using your phone. And as a bonus for passing the entrance exam, all students were given 100,000 points. And, one and everybody fucking blew it. It's kind of crazy that EK, it's it like pseudo fucking, how easy is the entrance exam is pseudo passed in? This is pre-season one, episode one pseudo. So he's even dumber than where Horikita has trained him up to be, right? I clearly, he did land in class D, so the entrance exam was probably, his scores are pretty bad, but like, damn, the lenience for the entrance exams? I don't know. This is supposed to be like an institute to raise and foster the strongest most corrupt politicians in japan you gotta be pretty smart but like they just fucking let pseudo in <laughs> I, it's just funny if you think about shit like this one point equals to one yen for reference that's roughly usd 919 dollars the students excited by their new baller status baller hanakoji was puzzled by how generous this was everything seemed a bit too good to be true the school was Usually when things are too good to be true, it usually means it's too good to be true. You better save your fucking points now. In fact, Chabashira, why don't you say something? Get involved. Tell the kids, hey, you might want to be a little bit, you know, frugal with your point spending. I don't know. I'm just saying that's it for me by class. If she said that, I doubt she'd get her salary knocked out. No, I bet in fact it'd be the other way. I bet the kids would be like, oh, thanks, Chabashira. And they do even better and unite as a team. But no, Koji has to do fucking everything. L teacher. Advertised as the be all and and all of success. No matter what you wanted to do, if you went to the school, you'd succeed at it. That's mm. what was advertised. For such a competitive environment, this seemed a bit easygoing. They had individual dorms mm. and a substantial allowance. Something just didn't add up. Their homeroom teacher soon left, and it was a free-for-all. The newly rich students wanted to live life. Amidst the noise, someone called out. Hirata. Can I please have your attention? He suggested that they do introductions since there's still time left till the entrance ceremony. If class D is stupid enough to be frivolous to spend it on, how can they make the class A? And that's the whole point. Do you want to at least give them a fucking chance? Or you can just say, all right, if you fail, you fail. And you just give up on them. No wonder Chabashira has been stuck in class D until Koji showed up. She doesn't do her fucking role as a teacher. They're, a teacher is supposed to fucking lift the students up. A teacher is supposed to inspire and motivate the students. Not Chabashira, man. Nah. That's, nah, nah, man. You should not be thinking of, eh, if they can't check, if they are, if, if, if they get blindsided by something that they will get blindsided by, fuck it, I'm going to give up on them from day zero. I think that's a fucking L mindset. I think Chabashira is stuck in class D for that exact reason until Koji showed up. And now Koji's doing all her fucking work. And she's still like, damn, Koji. I don't think she even realizes how important he is. Even though she <laughs> like says... Koji is like, she obviously acknowledges him, but still, he is doing all the work that she needs to fucking After do. After he got everyone's attention, he went first and introduced himself as Hirata Yusuke, who loved soccer. His bravery impressed Aina Koji, but Boyfriend. Hirata and K, boyfriend, girlfriend, season one, but we don't fucking know that because season one anime just fucked around. More than that, he could feel Hirata's popularity. You can see Koenji's feet over here too, by the way. You don't see his face, but Koenji has his feet on his table. You shoot up instantly with the ladies and so the introductions continued we had inogashira kokoro boom class three girl right over here left side who loved sue yamauchi haruki who played table tennis yamauchi haruki you see this right over here guys you see this shit what does it say yamauchi haruki first year class d club affiliation the black room the goat yamagod the only person in this class, along with Koji and Koenji, and perhaps to an extent Ike as well, who knows how much he's hiding his true powers. 
But look out for them, guys. Baseball and was a man of many talents until he injured himself. Man of many talents. Keep that in mind. And was placed in rehab. We had Kushida, the girl from the bus who went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Koenji. Her goal was to be did she go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Koenji though? Did she really? I feel like Koenji acknowledged her saying, oh, a worthy opponent showed up, but he shot her down immediately. Friends with everyone. But the intro stopped at a fierce looking student with fiery red hair. Pseudo. He scowled at how stupid this idea was. He rather tried to defuse the situation, but the girls in the class made it worse by calling the redhead out, which oh. led to him leaving. But he oh. wasn't the only one who felt this. Pseudo just fucking left the class? <laughs> okay. So, several students followed his lead, including Horikita. When Hirata caught Horikita leaving, he felt a bit lonely. The remaining students kept the intros going with Ike Season next. Season 3, girl. His sole purpose here was to find a girlfriend. And of Ikyo, bro. Ike's goal is to soul. His sole purpose is to find a girl. And he chooses Kushida of all girl. This is very interesting to me. And I wonder if they're going to develop the relationship in the future light novel content. Because I'm only anime only. But there is a lot of moments where Ike is just simping for Kushida. Even there's like a funny scene where Ike is like trying to call Kushida Kikyo, right? I feel like at a certain point, with the way that Kushida is heading down this path of like destruction and like being a traitor and Ike trying to simp for her, will there be like a romantic moment where Ike kind of like saves her and there's like salvation for Kushida because of Ike? I don't know. I feel like Ike is a joke character, not like Yamauchi, Yamauchi series, but Ike like. I, I'd appreciate it if there was a cool moment where EK shines, not just like the survival, survival like island dark, but like, I don't know, protecting Kushida somehow, being like a Giga Chat, but it's hard for me to see EK doing that at this current point in time. Of course, the girls roasted him mercilessly. Next was your golden The girls roasted EK mercilessly, damn. Boy Koenji, who turns out to be the heir of a massive business. The this is not uh, anime content, Koenji right? conglomerate group. Koenji conglomerate group, bro. I wanna learn. I wanna just fucking search this up on Wikipedia and search it up. But this, here's the thing: the more I try to learn more about the show, the more I get spoiled because you know, anime only. He was also only interested in meeting the ladies. Oh, sorry. And finally, guys, something was, is something is muted in my end. Just a second. Let me play this back. Conglomerate group. He was also only interested in meeting the ladies. Mm. And finally, it was Ainako. Oh my god, sorry. Jesus Christ. My AirPods are fucking up. Turn, oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Connect that. Connect that. Jesus Christ. He was so nervous that he completely botched his introduction in the class. His intro was so bad. He was like, should I go for a joke? Nah, I think I'll be cringe if I do that. What if I try to be really engaging and high energy? Nah. So he's like, uh, um, my name is Kiyotaka Anakoji. Nice to meet you. And everyone's like, ugh. Class followed up with claps of pity. Luckily, though, <laughs> claps of it was pity. time for the entrance ceremony. Hanakoji attended, but it was a... Notice here, right here, the entrance ceremony. You have Yamauchi right here, acting like he's sleeping. But you know what he's doing. Product of the black room. Bro is conspiring at this current moment, too, when he looks like he's sleeping. Pretty standard affair. Afterwards, the students divided up into groups. Some headed for the dorms, while others head up the campus to hang out. Our hero decided to go to the convenience store and he ran into Horikita. And she Horikita pulled no Suzun. punches, but Ainakoji had adapted, shrugging off the hostility with small talk. Horikita was there to pick up necessities for her new dorm life. Ainakoji noticed something interesting. See, this is like a knowledge check, right? So Suzune immediately understood the game and was very frugal. She's one of the few people that actually saved points. So as much as we shit on, you know, Suzune or Suzun, she was smart enough to be aware of this trap. Horikita bought the cheapest items available. The small talk continued, and they debated how okay. effective, they debated how their, effective their little class introduction Kurita was. Kurita won the argument by simply asking Anakoji... How did she how simply win the argument by how many friends she has? Nothing. I mean, like, I don't know. Like, do you have any friends, though? Because she has no fucking friend, but she, like, she thinks that having no friends is a good thing. She's like, hmm, I don't need them at this current point in time. By simply asking Anakoji how many friends he made, he didn't have a response, but it was nothing short of zero. In Susan is kind of a friend, right? Like, no, she's a tool, but, like, maybe she can be convinced that you're friends. In either case, that wouldn't have mattered for Horikita, since she never intended to make friends anyways. So they shopped around, picking up essentials, and Ainokoji picked up some ramen. They noticed free <laughs> items available. Ainokoji just picked up ramen. Interesting detail. For students who used up their points. But their little shopping spree was cut short when they noticed the fierce red-headed student at the cash Fighting. line. He forgot his cart and couldn't no. afford his ramen. 
<laughs> Sudo's about to start shit at the convenience store. Anakoji offered to pay for Mr. Redhead. Oh? And he was gracious, introducing himself as Sudo. With a swipe of his card, the bill was taken care of. Wow. And it finally hit Anakoji how much money he had and made him uneasy. If you gave students up, that's a cool scene. I don't think we saw that in the in the anime. Him buying, you know, suited the ramen, but the ramen was 156 points. But yeah, we get 100k immediately off the bat. But you're telling me we're just gonna get 100k every month? It's like, nah, that's not what happens. Better be careful with those points. Hundred thousand yen per month, and given there were 480 students in the school, that would be roughly 48 million or 400,415 US dollars per month. Well, this is like a government institution, so I'm sure all the Japanese taxpayer money is going towards this. So you could, you, this could be feasible, but 440K per month just for the fucking school like allowance? That's insane. How is that feasible? They ran into Suda outside and decided to eat their ramen by the sidewalk. When Horikita arrived, she instantly got into an argument with Sudo. Their personalities oh. were like oil and water. Their personalities like oil and water yet in season two we figure out that they're pretty much very similar in the way that she has her issues with her brother and how she talked about her insecurities and then Suda's like damn I didn't know you were like that too and they kind of opened up but it's really interesting how this relationship starts and is this a ship Sudo and Horikita Suzun I don't know I don't know after ignoring Sudo's existence for a bit Horikita departed but it wasn't over yet soon Ainuko she just ignored him the entire time. That's very nice. He and Sudo were approached by three second year students. They wanted their spot. And you know Sudo wasn't having any of this. 1v3. They got into a heated argument and after Sudo revealed that he was in class D, the students mocked him. Anakoji wondered, was there any meaning behind the letter classes? The three second year students left. So Anakoji at this moment didn't even know. Obviously, like how, how could he know? But he didn't even know the meaning of D, meaning yo. A, B, C, D, you trash. Left shortly, not wanting to make a scene. After his meal, Anakoji went back to the dorms and took a look at his new room. This marked the beginning of a new life and he couldn't be more excited. Okay. Fast forward to the first day of class. It was and I think this is the end of this video. We're on chapter two now. So obviously there's a lot of cut content that we can definitely react to. But here's the plan. Every day or so, I'm going to be reacting to different chapters to satisfy cut like... Um cut light novel content and this will be our bread and butter you know early morning stream content rather than eminence and shadow hope you guys enjoyed this reaction of satisfy and there's a lot more code content that you can look forward to